Good morning. It's Wednesday of Holy Week. We'll have a devotional this morning, or I will, and then tomorrow we'll have a Holy Thursday service at Hope Community United Methodist Church in Pasadena, 6 p.m. Be a service of Holy Communion. We'll read the Passion. There'll be a brief homily, and we'll serve Holy Communion. And then we'll end the service with Tenebrae as we actually take the Good Friday service and blend it in and strip the altar and take away the pyramids as we live with the disciples through the loss of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And then Saturday at 5.30, we'll have our first Easter service. Sunday at 11, we'll have another Easter service. Both of these will have Holy Communion. And we'll begin our journey with Jesus as he is resurrected. It's called the Great 50 Days as we go toward Pentecost. Timing is everything, I guess. And I'll be preparing and having surgery right after Easter. And so uh, daily devotionals probably won't be broadcast for a few weeks, maybe a couple weeks. And then when we come back, we may go through the great 50 days with a once a week devotional. We'll see how that goes. Just wanted to give you a heads up. They may be missing for a little while. Really, we've been doing this for a year, and the reason we did it initially was because we couldn't get together. And now that people are becoming vaccinated, uh, we do have more attendance. And I hope that we'll see more people coming back to worship. I know that we'll still be wearing masks, but we've been in exile for a year. And I know there's a yearning to be back together, to do things together. And I pray for that. Today I want to read to you from Matthew. And it's uh, in the 26th chapter. It begins with verse 14, if you want to read along. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment on, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make preparations to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that one whom the Son of Man has betrayed. It would have been better for that one to have been born, not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Paul Puccinelli is the director of liturgy and music in Sierra Madre, California. His reflection today is perfect, I think. He says in the gospel today, Jesus tells his disciples, one of you will betray me. 
And they reply one at a time, surely it is not I, Lord. Temptation. Temptation is real. In fact, he says, he says, when he hears that every year, when he hears that scripture, he says, I'm tempted to make a joke to claim that Jesus said, yes, it's definitely one of you and don't call me, surely. Yeah, Judas was tempted. He had this desire for 30 pieces of silver and he was paid to betray Jesus. It's easy for us to judge him, isn't it? But let's admit it, we all face temptation daily. Poor Judas, forever known as the betrayer, even before we, as we begin to read the scriptures and Judas is introduced, we know he's the one that will betray us. And in chapter 27, verse five, Judas hangs himself But it also, Matthew's gospel also tells us that Judas repented. He went and turned the money back to the chief priests and the elders. And he said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. Jesus could have called on armies to come and defend him. but he responded with the same love that he had always shown for Judas and he honored his freedom to choose. And Jesus does the same for us. He asks us to come home to him. He asks us all to come home to him, but no matter what, he respects our human free will. We are tempted. We find ourselves desiring things that make no sense, whatever, small things like chocolate or coffee or new cars or better clothes or a more prestigious job or lofty status. We may even end up on destructive paths, become addicted. We may fall victim to betrayal and hate. So today we all read these scriptures and say, surely it's not I, Lord. I don't know that any of us really plan to hurt others, but we do. And even though we have hurt others and we've been tempted and we've answered those temptations, even no matter what, we can always come home to God. Even as Judas arrived and walked up to him and betrayed him, Jesus still loved him. Matthew 26, 50, he calls him friend. So today we realize we're blessed to have Jesus' love for us. We are forgiven and loved even though so many times we have failed. Today we reflect on where our temptations have been, how we've failed. Are we ready to come home? Paul's prayer, Paul Puccinelli's prayer says this. It says, Dear God of compassion and understanding, Dear God of compassion and understanding, thank you for always calling us friend. Help us not to condemn just as you invite us to follow you willingly, freely, lovingly. Help us love one another just as you have loved us. Jesus says in John, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, but I do not give to you as the world gives. So friends, For each of you today, I offer on behalf of Jesus Christ, peace and love. 
but not just for today, but forever. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.